Good morning, Magic players. We are back for the seventh day of the Pioneer Marathon. Whittling down the decks here on the right, but we do still have 26 entries on the wheel. So let's go ahead and spin and see what we're doing. Rona combo. So this is Rona combo. Now, first things first, there's multiple ways to build this deck and the Rona package itself shows up in multiple decks. So you could consider various decks Rona combo. But for the purposes of this deck, we're going to say this is Rona combo. So what is the Rona combo? Well, it is built around Rona Herald of Invasion, two mono one three legend. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, untap Rona, you can tap to loot, and then you can pay six, one of which is a Phyrexian black mono, to transform into a five five with trample. And whenever a source deals damage to Rona, the source's controller exiles a card from their hand at random. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield under your control. Otherwise, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. So primarily, you're interested in the front-facing version for its ability to loot and untap via legendary spells. So the combo is Rona plus Retraction Helix plus Mox Amber. So if you have these three cards, you have Rona. You cast Retraction Helix on Rona, giving her the ability to tap to bounce a card. You then cast Mox Amber. The Mox Amber will untap Rona. You float blue with Amber. Then you use the Rona, which has been targeted by Retraction Helix already, to bounce the Amber back to your hand. Then you recast Amber, which untaps Rona. You tap for a blue, and you repeat generating infinite blue mana. If you have legendary creatures or planeswalkers in other colors, such as Kinnon or Tyvar, you can use Amber to tap for other colors. So you do this over and over and over to make infinite mana. However, the fact that you have to tap the Rona to do this means that you can't loot infinite times. You only will get to loot once. However, infinite mana can sometimes win you the game depending on what you're doing. So the primary way that you're going to win the game is via Karn. So you put Karn down, and now you have infinite mana. You Karn for Aetherflux Reservoir, since Walking Ballista is not legal in Pioneer. And since you have the ability to cast Amber over and over and over infinite amounts of times, you then cast the Amber, triggering the Reservoir, gain infinite life, and then Death Star laser your opponent. There are other ways you can also win, such as Tyvar. So let's say you just have Rona and Tyvar. Well, you can make infinite black and green mana with Mox Amber, and then you can use Rona to bounce Tyvar. So Tyvar can come in, mill three cards, and potentially put a two drop back into play. And then you can bounce Tyvar, recast it, which untaps Rona. So you get to infinitely mill cards over in your deck. You'll eventually find Kinnon. Then you use Kinnon to spin for another creature, to probably win the game. So you can kin on for Atraxa, or you can just, you know, put a bunch of creatures into play, whatever. And although that's not a win on the spot, it's close enough. You also have JVP who can flip, who loots and can flip over to get Retraction Helix back. Tyvar can also incidentally mill Retraction Helix into your graveyard, so you might have a win there. Oath of Nyssa also provides Oath of Nyssa plus Rona plus Retraction Helix means that you can cast Oath for as many times as you have green mana. Or if you have Kinnon or Tyvar in play, you can just replay Oath of Nyssa infinite times because you at plus Amber because you have infinite green. So you do that until you find Karn and win the game. The alternative methods are, so you just have like a bunch of elves, of course, to mana ramp, although you're not playing the full eight and Sylvan Karyatid. And you can use any of these creatures and use Luka to essentially polymorph them into a Traxa because Luka has... Minus two, exile target creature you control, then reveal cards from the top until you reveal a creature with higher mana value and put it onto the battlefield. So since all of your creatures only cost one and two, if you transform a two mana creature, it will always hit Atraxa. So that is another way that you can potentially win the game. So those are all of the various lines. Your mana base is primarily bug, but you do have eight multicolor lands that you can use to pay for Luka or potentially Atraxa later in the game. Also, Oath of Nyssa lets you play Luka regardless of which colors you have. So that is another way that you get to play Luka. The rest of the sideboard contains the various things you're going to need in matchups. So you have a Karn board, which includes Mightstone, Weakstone, Needle, Haywire Might, Tormod's Crypt, and another Mox Amber from the sideboard in case you're missing the Mox Amber, but you have Rona plus Retraction Helix when you find Karn. You've got one Dragonlord Jamoka, one Nahiri the Harbinger, two Kalidus, one Massacre Girl, two Thought Distortions for the Control Decks, one Disdainful Stroke, and one Spell Pierce. And again, as I said earlier, there's various ways to build the Rona Combo deck and the Rona Combo herself, since this is pretty easy to fit Rona plus Amber Retraction Helix into various builds. 
does show up in other decks as well, but this is the most all in on the Rona version of the deck. Hopefully we can win via Atraxa most of the time because the Mox Amber loop does take a ton of clicks. So let's jump into the first league of the day with Rona combo. All right, we're on the play for round one. Hmm. I can Blooming Marsh Elf and then play Karyotid even if I don't find a land, but unless my opponent has removal and then I'm just really far behind, I also have double attracts in hand. Yeah, let's mold this. All right, better. So keep this. What am I putting back? Kinon is maybe the worst card in the hand. Yeah, I think so. Let's put Kinon back. New standard stuff looks neat. Fairies might become the new blue-black go-to or at least a legitimate alternative to Shieldred piles. The thing is, like, Shieldred is just so good, though. It's kind of like, if you're playing black, why aren't you just playing Shieldred? All right, nick those ramp. So we got to combo them out pretty fast. Well, there's the Retraction Helix, so that's helpful. So let's play Karyatid and pass the turn. And Karn. Unfortunately, this sideboard doesn't include a Damping Sphere, but I can Needle something. Kiora. Hmm... Hmm. Retraction Helix is also pretty good against the Nykthos deck when you can untap stuff. What am I carning for if I Karn? Karn for Mox Amber and Needle or Might Stone? Hmm. I probably go fetch Amber and then I can fetch Needle next turn. Although they can maybe just animate the layer to kill it. So if they do that, what's the primary thing I want to grab? I guess it's Amber. I can also just play Tyvar and Mill, but then I'm Milling Blind and I might not hit anything. Hmm. All right. Play Karn, minus, grab, Amber, and pass. And Amber cannot make colorless mana with Karn. So we have all of the pieces except Rona. And if they want to kill Karn, they have to spend their whole turn animating Lair to do it. Wolf Willow Haven. And that's four, Lair becomes a 3-3. Three, three. We also don't have a Stone Brain in the sideboard. Yeah, anytime you have these Karn decks where they have other sideboard cards, I always wish there were other sideboard cards for Karn. Like in particular, I wish that... There was a Damping Sphere for this matchup and for Lotus Field, and I wish there was a Stone Brain. Yeah, so kill Karn off, that's fine. We drew a Tap Land, unfortunately. So, let's see. I still, since this is a Tap Land, I can't tutor for Needle to Needle the Kiora. So I guess I'm blind milling Tyvar and hoping I get there. I can also Retraction Helix the Karyatid, bounce Kiora, then Tyvar, untap, bounce Wolf Willow Haven. Hmm. All right, let's just do... Play Tyvar, Blind Mill. If we hit Rona, we win the game. Blind Mill. All right, we didn't hit anything. Unfortunate. All right, Amber. And this can't make blue. So if they just attack Tyvar, then Tyvar dies. Or I have to chump with Karyatid. All right, pass to the opponent. Another land. Untap, Mana. Yeah, Karn shuts off Mox Amber, although we can use Retraction Helix to bounce it. Stone Brain. Oh, no. They just get the Stone Brain Rona out of our deck. So if they Stone Brain Rona out of our deck then we basically just lose, right? Like I can Karn for Needle and then Needle their Karn. I guess we don't just strictly lose. Like I can win with Atraxa as well. All right, yeah, that resolves. What would you Stone Brain? I can Stone Brain Karn or Nykthos. What does Nahiri do for the deck in the sideboard? Discard fodder for Tyvar and sort of spot removal. Yeah, it's looting that potentially gets stuff into your graveyard for Tyvar to bring back or it just kills things. Also, Nahiri can ultimate to go find Rona or Atraxa. Oh, they named Retraction Helix. Yeah, I guess either way. So let's see. I can't tap the Amber, so I can't get Karn off the board. So let's go Kinon. I'm probably just needling Karn, even though I have my own Karn. How much mana do I have? Four, five, six. So yeah, Karn, Needle, Karn. All right, tap, untap, play Karn, minus, grab, Needle, play Needle, name Karn. And then I'm going to hold this in case I draw Rona, and then I can use that to loot, Ro to loot this garbage away. Although, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I draw a Traxa, I can play a Traxa right now. Or Tyvar has to survive, though. They can potentially just kill Tyvar. So yeah, I am actually going to play this then. All right, pass the opponent. Also, did your opponent just Mega Whiff with the Stone Brain? No, because Retraction Helix also sets the Rona combo off. But like, and Retraction Helix... Oh, come on. Besage you. All right. How much mana do they still have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So they can play Statue, or they can just grab Leveler for next turn. Retraction Helix would have allowed me to like potentially bounce multiple things. So, and I don't even have a Rona yet. So it's not strictly a whiff. Like, oh, Sky Sovereign. So they can Sky Sovereign kill Kinon or either of my walkers. Oh, and they have Nykthos. So they just have everything. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sky Sovereign, which one are they killing? 
Presumably Kinnon. No, Karn. All right. More lands. So if I attack Karn right now, they either have to chump it or Karn dies. I can also spin Kinnon and potentially find Traxa. I don't think there's any reason to spin before attacking. They can't crew Sky Sovereign. So let's attack Karn. Swing at Karn. All right, chump block with the elf. So then let's activate Kinnon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess I want to leave Karyatid back to block the... No, it doesn't matter because they just crew Sky Sovereign and then kill it, right? So what could I attract into right now that I would play? I'd have two mana left over. What would I main phase? I would main phase... Okay, so Retraction Helix is stripped from the deck. I'd main phase Oath of Nyssa, I guess. All right, activate. We just hit another Karyatid. All right, so Karyatid into play. I should just minus Tyvar now because the Sky Sovereign's going to kill it anyway. So minus Tyvar. All right, well, we get Rona back, but Rona... So Rona or Kinnon can die from the Sky Sovereign, but what are you going to do? All right, pass. Oath of Nyssa. Are you going to play any no ban list historic on Arena? No. I refuse to play Arena. All right, Kinnon or Rona? Rona, sure. So we take five. They didn't bother to animate Lair. Hmm. All right, Oath of Nyssa. I got Besaju. All right. Problem is they have multiple blockers via the Lair. So even if I Besaju Sky Sovereign, I can't actually kill this thing. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So spin Kinnon. Another Sylvan Karyatid. Kinnon also can't hit Rona because Rona's a human. I guess I just hold Besaju up and Besaju whatever they try to do. Yeah. All right. Pass. Minus Karn, and then they're going to go grab some expensive thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Leveler. Cityscape leveler. Mm hmm. So the Besaju doesn't actually stop them. So they get to leveler, kill Kinnon. I have five mana available. Yep. Mm hmm. Kinnon dies. Then I'm pretty much forced to Besaju this. Oh, I should have Besaju'd it with the trigger on the stack so they can't crew Sky Sovereign. Yep. That was my bad. At least they can't kill anything that I have on the board. Am I supposed to besage you this now? I don't think so, because then they just unearth it. Although even that is not too bad. All right, I have a ton of mana. Let's just pass and see what I draw. All right, well, we drew a land, so we're going to lose. So let's just go to sideboards. All right, what do I want? Stroke, Nahiri, leave all the cardboard stuff alone. Massacre Girl? No. Thought Distortion's a maybe, but I don't think I can get to it fast enough. I think this is mostly for control. So let's just play these and then discard and then uh, put what back. I need to outspeed them. One Atraxa and Jace might be too slow. All right, Jace, run this. All right, we have two of the combo pieces and we can speed up. So this is a definite 100% keep. Marsh, Elf, go. Layer, Elf, back to us. So Marsh, play Oath of Nyssa, trigger, just more mana. All right, so grab another Elf, play Karyatid and pass land wolf willow here and then play something else oath of nissa nick Bose, and another elf so they have storm mana next turn jesus all right rona play elf and then i'm not going to play and then so i have played a land this turn i guess i attack them i'm fine with trading swing here and pass back to them so yeah two three four five six mana oh no more than that because nick Bose adds another one cavalier what do you think led Watsi to making Besaju the whoopsies of a design it is? Incompetent design team overall, lack of testing, only balanced for EDH, the perpetual policy to make land spells. I think they've stopped caring, is my only conclusion. I think they no longer care about the health of the game, and they're just pushing out the most powered cards they can to sell packs, and screw whatever happens to the formats. So they have Storm next turn. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I cannot play Atraxa without playing this land. So I should loot with Rona first, and then I can just discard the breeding... I can just not discard breeding pool if I hit something else. So loot with Rona. All right, get rid of the elf. Shock this in. Then play Atraxa. So blue, green, black, white. One, two, three. Trigger Rona to untap. Traxa trigger. All right, what do I want? Amber. Can I win here? I only get access... I get access to infinite mana, right? Oh, so I win. So Amber plus Kinnon for the creature... Tyvar for the Planeswalker. Land doesn't matter. Get Disdainful Stroke for instant. Land. No, actually don't win because Kinnon can't spin into anything that can win the game on the, on the spot. So I can do what? Nahiri's not going to do it. I guess Nahiri can loot. Yeah, Nahiri can rummage. So let's do that. And I can win through this, but it's going to take a long time. All right, so take all of that stuff. So then 
loot, bin a land, cast amber, untap blue, retraction helix here, uh, bounce this. Oh, they have Beseju. They always have the Beseju. God damn it. All right. And that only leaves me with one mana, so I can't even play anything else. All right. Braiding pool tapped. Then that fails. And then we just pass it back to them. And we can very easily lose here, although we might not. So I can potentially recover next turn. Beseju is kind of an amazing card in real formats that keeps artifact and land strategies in tech without people needing to play main deck naturalizes. Problem with mono green isn't Beseju, it's that Pioneer has no relevant land hate or answers to, to four mana Karn. While true, in my opinion, Beseju it kind of has the same problem Thoughtseize and Greasefang has, where it's not being used to keep degenerate decks in check, but instead used by degenerate, jack, degenerate decks to make sure they remain degenerate. It's just that Pioneer sucks overall. When talking about what card could we ban, mono green has the same issue as Rakdos, where you can't just ban one card. Now you can ban Karn, and then, although they could... They can still do their crazy Nykthos stuff. They can't just like win on the spot. Without Karn, that means they don't have access to infinite combo loops. They don't have access to Karning for Cityscape Leveler. They just have to get it naturally out of their deck. They can't storm into it. I have the Crackpot idea to just ban Llanowar Elves and Elvish Mystic. That's not, that's not going to happen because they'll always, they'll just like print another one mana dork at some point and then you'll be left with the same problem. All right, there's Karn. At least they're out of mana mostly it seems. I don't know, Monogreen would be fun little deck without Karn or Nykthos. Well, without Nykthos, the deck's just dead. Woodcaller, Automaton. Do they have the mana to... No, they're still short, right? Oh, no, they're not. So they can Woodcaller, untap Nykthos. They have exactly two mana left. Nykthos again, Storm again. Yeah, Beseju is a, is a card that basically just... It gives decks like Lotus Field, Tron, etc. It just gives them answers to your permanence. So one of the things that you would use to beat super rampy combo decks like... Nykthos, Tron, etc. is uh, Damping Sphere, Alpine Moon, Blood Moon, those kind of effects. And now with Beseju, it just says, oh, these decks just always have access to this stuff. They get, uh, Living End gets to play Beseju. Like any combo deck now gets to play Beseju and they can just answer all of your enchantment and artifact-based hate cards. All right, another Karn, Cavalier. They have three mana left and one card in hand. It's just like, look at this nonsense. We went from... They had a Cavalier on board to this in one turn. I wish Watsy would ban more often so we could ban one card, see what happens, then go from there. Watsy in the community is super hesitant to do anything because they can only underban or overban. Gets Needle, so they're going to Needle Rona. And then I can't even attack Karn because they have three blockers with Reach. That can actually just straight up trade for Atraxa. And they have a Storm in their graveyard that they can flash back next turn and an active Karn. But Sage is a good draw. All right, what am I doing? Beseju, the Needle, then start going off with Rona and try to find the win. I can't even use Amber, though, with Karn in play, although if I find another Attraction Helix, I can bounce it. All right, so it's more mana efficient to Beseju. So, okay, Beseju, blow up Needle, then loot with Rona. Uh, let's see. I might be short on mana. I guess I don't need a second Atraxa, but I want to keep it. Yeah, okay, so discard the land, play Kinon. So blue and green. Untaps, and we get more mana out of our mana dorks. Rona again. All right, discard a land. I can play Nahiri, but I can't really do anything with it. I guess I can loot. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana right now. I can attack with Atraxa, and then they just block with Cavalier, get something busted back, and then... Or they can double block, or they can just block once. I don't even know what to do. I hold up Stroke for the Storm. I have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can't play another Atraxa and hold Stroke up unless I find something. And here he just doesn't do anything on this board, right? I guess I can kill their Nykthos. Yeah, I can kill their Nykthos. That's pretty good. That still leaves them with a boatload of mana, but at least Nykthos is gone. All right, so Nahiri, green, green. This is super awkward. All right, Nahiri, untap Rona, then kill Nykthos creature. I guess loot again. Although I want both of these cards. So let's just attack Karn first and see what happens. Swing at Karn. Block with one or two Cavaliers. Sure, two Cavaliers. So Bamf, double Cavalier triggers. What are they getting back? Honestly, Karn has no business being legal in formats without Bolt. And Nykthos has no business being legal in formats without Moon. They're getting back Nykthos from the graveyard and another Cavalier. What, would, what could I draw where I would put Atraxa back? Where I would discard Atraxa rather? I don't... I think I would do anything, but I should loot regardless. All right, so Nykthos on top. So loot. Yeah, okay. Discard land. 
and just pass back to them with stroke up. I'd personally be behind monthly BNRs, but there's a lot to consider on like something like League or Hearthstone. Most players don't didn't spend real money to get Evelyn before her gutting in two weeks, and Hearthstone can literally re refund banned cards. Fixing formats is just super difficult overall. Well, the only reason it's super difficult is because they've just given up on balancing their cards. Like, yeah, when you just print nonstop design mistakes without any care. Stone brain, so they're just going to stone brain the combo out of our deck. That's okay, I guess. All right. Are they, are they hitting retraction helix? Disdainful stroke. It's because they know we have it in hand. Sure. So they get, get rid of disdainful stroke so they can storm. Very well. And the let's just print cards to fix it solution is how we got Modern Horizons, but that's also slighted because Watsi did not have the health of Modern in mind when making this set. Yeah, Modern Horizons was not designed to be fun, creative sets to fixed formats. It was designed to be uh, more BS, super powered power creep stuff. Simple solution, print Wasteland into Standard. Could do a Pioneer Horizons with Bolt. Do not do a Pioneer Horizons. All right, so they can transmog one of our guys into an Ox. Sure. If they do Pioneer Horizons, I am actually going to quit 60 card magic full tilt and stick to proxy EDH. At this point, I've stopped paying any money for EDH cards. I'm just proxying everything now. Retraction Helix. So I can eat their Transmog Wand and then I lose Nahiri. So first, first things first, let's play Atraxa. Uh, blue, black, white, Atraxa. Trigger. All right, what am I grabbing? Rona, Amber. I can grab Karn and shut their this off. What does Tyvar do for me? I don't have, oh, I do have the combo because I can get rid of Karn. All right, so I need Tyvar in that case, right? And grab a land, or I guess Plaza will be my land. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to just clock out though is the problem. Plaza, play Tyvar. So green, black, and play Rona. Then this untaps Karyatid. Then we make blue, Retraction Helix on Rona, bounce Karn. Play Amber, untap, resolve Amber, blue. All right, now I have to loop, but I'm going to time out before this loop actually finishes. Oh, I meant to tap that for mana, whatever. I'm down one Karn, right? So I have to Nahiri rummage until I find Karn, and then I can win that way. So discard this. Luka doesn't do it. So bounce Nahiri back to my hand. I guess I can bounce Atraxa back to my hand, and that finds it faster. All right, cast Atraxa. There's Karn. Play Karn, then Karn for Aetherflux Reservoir. Play Aetherflux, cast Amber, untap, trigger, resolve this. Then Amber again, trigger the Reservoir, and then Death Star Laser. All right, well, we just have to win game three in two and a half minutes. What could go wrong? So that being the case, the only possible way I can win is super, super fast. So JVP is better than Stroke? I don't know. Having cards not go through standard is why so many competitive formats suck, in my opinion, in my honest opinion. It's not just Horizons. Are you forgetting how many cards from standard are total bull? Besaju is standard. And I like Modern Horizons cards. Playing against the top offenders sucks, but there's a lot of stuff that's so much weaker than what was printed in 2022 standard. People often overlook that in 2022, the meta was broken three times. First Fable and Neo Lands, then Ledger Shredder, then Leyline Binding. I just hope that eventually these practices bite Watsi and by extension Hasbro hard enough that they dial this nonsense back. The only thing I can I think that could do that is another card game stealing their market share or some sort of legal change on TCG gambling laws. I doubt and either of those will both will either happen and even if they do, they will have any effect on their policies. All right, we have to combo off and win in two and a half minutes. Well, that's a bunch of it, so let's go. Keep Elf, Blooming Marsh, Elf, go. Nykthos plays Kiora, untaps a land, plays another elf. Uh, Mana Confluence and do I just Tyvar here? All right, Tyvar, uh, untap this and go. Tyvar is more mana efficient because I can play and activate Karyatid immediately. Three mana for troll, trigger, and they can go land, untap Nykthos for six. Oh, they just don't have it. Oh, another Nykthos. Okay, Nykthos for six and then storm off or play Cavalier or any number of other broken things. Karn, minus Karn. They can Karn Needle Tyvar. Yeah, Needle. Plays Needle. Needle's Rona. I don't even have Rona in play. Why not Needle Tyvar? Luka? Oh, I can Luka into Atraxa, but then I'm still staring this down. All right, so Plaza. Is that better? They get to play six, a bunch of mana. That's probably not even better. I'm just running out of time, though. All right, red, red, green. Untap this. Play Luka. Minus this. Unfortunate. 
Oh yeah, I forgot. I don't actually hit Atraxa unless I have a two drop. Well, doesn't really matter. Even if I hit Atraxa, then they still get to untap with Karn plus, uh, how much mana is this? Six, six, four, ten. So it's still ten mana regardless. Wood Collar Automaton. All right, then they get to go off. What would I have done instead of doing that? I would have just played, I would have minus Tyvar and just like hoped to get something. I would have like just minus and then and then like besaged the needle and bounced two things and then they just replay their stuff. Storm the Festival number one, still with eight mana. Oath and a second Kiora. So they have the mana to do it again. Another Nykthos. Mightstone, Weak Stone. Draw two. Another Elf. Then Storm Flashback, still with two mana open. And they haven't played a land this turn either, so they still have another Nykthos after this. Or not necessarily another Storm, but more mana. Double Cavalier. So they draw two cards and then flip a bunch of lands over. Or potentially hit Storm in the Graveyard again. All right, there's a Storm in the Graveyard. There's another Storm in the Graveyard. So play Nykthos as their land for turn. They get to Storm again. Wolf Willow Haven, make more mana. Mm-hmm. Kiora, Old Growth Troll, double draws, and the Kiora gets to untap Nykthos again, so they can Storm again. New Oath. All right, so they're just going to win on this turn. I'm not even going to get to untap again. So the only question is, can they win in six minutes? And the answer is yes. They can win in six minutes. And Watsi doesn't see anything wrong with such play patterns. Nope, according to them, this is all fine. And again, one of the worst things about this is how long it takes. It's not, oh, I do my thing and then I win the game. It's, I do my thing and then I have to spend the next, you know, 10 to 15 minutes actually executing the combo. There's also the fact that, yeah, there's no actually good answers to this. The only answers to Nykthos are cards like Damping Sphere and Alpine Moon that get killed by Beseju. And it just feels like, yeah, there's nothing you can do. Like, we didn't have a bad draw, right? We actually had a pretty quick draw with a lot of, with ramp, with relevant planeswalkers. Doesn't matter. This is our opponent's turn three, four, whatever turn this is. Chain Veil Loop, all right. He won't make it without attacking. So he can potentially, so the only way he can win on the spot is stone braining us to death, but he can't execute that in four minutes. But what he can do is just set up, pass it back to us, and then we just pass it back to him. I mean, we're going to lose in one minute anyway. Yeah, so there's Stone Brain. I don't think he can Stone Brain loop in the remaining time. It is possible, though. Or it's possible that he just, again, Stone Brains all the relevant interaction out of our hand slash deck, and then just passes, and then we pass back, and then he has Lethal on board. If you can attract that, you can hold for a while. Yeah, but we're not going to be able to do that. Boat, kill Kinnon. Then you can just go combat, kill both of our walkers, pass. Leveler. Yeah, see, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to Stone Brain us. He just has to kill our board, pass it back to us, and then swing a, and then swing at us for lethal. Damping Sphere. Why would you grab Damping Sphere here? Just to prevent us from comboing? But, like, you have everything here. What's the... All right, uh, land, Karyatid. I guess I grab Atraxa. I guess Kinnon is actually mono neutral. Nah, it's not, because then I don't have Beseju mana. So, all right. Minus here, Atraxa trigger. Amber, Oath, Karyatid, Tyvar, land. Done. All right, pass. Doesn't matter, we're dead. I can besage you, but it doesn't matter. I also have one second on my clock, so again, it just doesn't matter. All right, so the main question to ask, I don't think is, is Nykthos too good? Because it's not. It has absolutely horrendous matchups against basically every aggro deck. It's very beatable. And it by no means is like, you know, hugely favored against any deck. Every deck, even the matchups that, even the decks that have bad matchups against Nykthos can still beat it. The better question I think is, have you ever played a single match against Nykthos that was fun? Can you look back at any matchup where you were playing against the Nykthos deck, regardless of whether you won or lost the game and said, that was a fun game? All right, we're on the play for round two. This is good. Keep this. So Blooming Marsh, Oath. Uh, I guess I'm grabbing Plaza. Pass to the opponent. Crag Crown Pathway, Kamano. Okay, so a Tarka Red, it looks like. So let's go Plaza into Kinnon. Oh no. I needed to play a different land. Oh no, I don't need to play a different land. Blue, green, Kinnon, Amber, and then use the Amber to play Karyatid, and pass. Stomping Ground. Bone Crusher Giant on this would be really bad, because then we're just left with nothing. Burning Tree. Enters as a 3-3 because of the Kamano. Play with Fire, kill our Kinnon. Yep. Back to us. Well, play Elf, play a Tap Land, go. Kinnon flips over into a 2-2. They shock. Legion Loyalist. This is First Strike, Trample. And they get to Surge Bushwhacker. 
Now, another Legion Loyalist. Swift Spear. Well, this is a lot of power. All right, so just block Kamano. We go 13. We're still drawing nothing. So Plaza, go. This is Legends only, so I can't even use this. All right, Copper Line, Swing. Llanowar Elves doesn't even have a good block here. So just keep blocking here. Go to seven. All right, Karn. What can I even get, though? I only have access to three mana, so... I guess I'm just grabbing Haywire Might and playing that as a blocker. Yeah, grab Haywire Might, play Haywire. Lightning Strike us. All right, are we dead? And they have Bush. Uh, do all their creatures get first strike? Yeah, so I'm just dead. I block here, 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 take six. All right, aggro, Kalidus, Massacre Girl, Dramoka's a no, so what am I cutting? Jace is slow, what else? Oath is kind of slow. And so if I'm bringing in Kalidus, that means I can no longer Luka into Atraxa with 100% certainty. So maybe cut those, put this back in. All right, let's run that. Or is Might Stone better than Luka? Just to kill like one thing, possibly? Mm, now nah, let's leave this as is. All right, submit this. All right, that's fine. Keep that. Play this tapped, go. Then we go Karyatid and then hopefully find another land for Kalidus on curve. Tapped, Stomping Ground. All right, play Karyatid. Pass, Mountain. No, no actions, huh? So I can go Amber Rona, and then I have two mana left and play Karyatid, or I can just play a Llanowar Elves. Now it's better to get Rona down, so oh, I, I should have played Amber first. All right, so even if they kill it, I can just play Llanowar Elves. Yeah, all right, they are killing it. That's fine. Play Llanowar. Why is the auto tapper so bad? Go third land. If they kept a hand that had no one drop and no two drop, they must have like, yeah, play with fire, kill our guy. All right, and now we don't have the mana for Cletus. Yeah, so... Not playing Amber first really screwed me over there. All right, Kalidus. Fourth land. Did they just, like, keep a handful of removal? All right, well, block. I assume they're going to spend a removal spell to kill this, and then I at least get a zombie and gain life, so that's fine. Oh, pump it with Gore Clan. Well, wasn't expecting that. Hmm. All right, Rona. Then blue here, green here. Play Karyatid. And pass. Stomp us. So they just kept a handful of interaction, basically. Swift Spear. Legion Loyalist. So I block with Rona. They have one card in hand. It has to be a burn or pump spell to kill Rona off. All right. I still have Karn following up next turn, even if it dies. Tarka's Command. <sighs> so I lost both my creatures in that exchange. All right. Now what? Oath. Another Karyatid. Then play this Karyatid, and I have to take damage from my Mana Confluences. And then just pass. And then I just go block, block. They play Bone Crusher. Another haste creature. Jesus. And then all these lands are just becoming inactive at this point. All right, block here. And they play Bone Crusher. Yeah, so Karn, we lose. All right. That felt so demoralizing. Like, obviously, I made mistakes. I don't think they mattered in the end, though. I think I still would have lost regardless. It just felt like our opponent had everything at every turn. Oh, well. On to round number three. I think I'm just taking lingering psychic damage from the Nykthos deck in round one. All right, so round three, we're on the draw. Okay, we only have one land, but we do have Llanowar Elves and Oath to find another land. Opponent reveals Gigantha. I'm going to keep this. All right, what Gigantha deck are they on? Overgrown Tomb. Tapped. All right, we drew our second land. So Sanctum, Elf, go. Dark Slick Shores. So are they on the Rona combo as well? Because they're Sultai Mana. Fatal Push our Elf. Back to us. Play Karyatid. Grizzly Salvage. All right, what are we working with here? Okay, they're a Ramp Atraxa deck? Huh. Or they're a reanimator deck or something? Tassiger. Oh, they're Neoform Atraxa? But they don't have red mana, right? Huh. What can I do here? If I play Tyvar, it just gets killed. I probably need to find more lands. So let's Oath for a land first. All right. Blooming Marsh. Play Blooming Marsh. So I can go Tyvar, Mill, get Elf back. And then I have two mana up. And I can Retraction Helixis if I need to. Oh, no. But I have to tap the Karyatid to do that. I guess I don't mind chumping Tassiger. All right. Play Tyvar, Mill. All right, well, we found Rona, so we're going to do that. If I find Amber right now, I win, so let's just loot. All right, well, what am I pitching? I probably want the Karyatid the least, so let's discard that. And then pass, and they can just kill Tyvar, that's fine. I can also Luke into Atraxa next turn. Tassiger kills Tyvar. Neoform, yeah, so it's Neoform Atraxa, but has Atarka as one of the potential hits. Founding, Tassiger, Bunch of lands, salvage, fatal push, botanical. And then they push the Rona and they get to hold up stubs. So I'm just, I just lose the game now. Founding, Tasker push, island. 
So push Rona, plays another land. I can look out into my own Atraxa if they don't have a stubborn in their hand, but that's a big if. Red, red, mana, 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 Luka. Yep. All right, pass back to them. They used push already, so I know that they have these two. Hit with Atraxa. They go to doesn't matter. We go to seven. Tassiger. Multiple retraction helices. All right. Tyvar considers in response and draws it immediately. Oh my god. Okay, another stubborn denial. Sure. I guess I bounce Atraxa now. All right, pass back to them. That's their third stubborn. I'm pretty sure I just chunk the Tassiger damage. So retraction helix here and then bounce Atraxa. All right, we're at two, and we can tap our Mana Confluence once. Thought sees us. Well, there goes Karn, presumably. Yep. Gigant into hand with one Mana open. Well, we're forced to either Chump Block or Retraction Helix the Tassiger, and then, and then what? Like, we just lose? Or I can Chump Retraction Helix Oath back to my hand, play Oath, but then what? All right, Helix. I'm only going to have two Mana left over after this. Bounce Oath. Play Oath. Found Kinon, so I can Kinon Chump Block. And then we're in the same position next turn. All right. All right. Block Giganta. Drew an elf. I can technically block both of them, but let's not prolong this. All right. Atraxa. So, um, man, I don't even know. Does any of this matter? Stroke does nothing. I mean, I guess I can stop them from... No, I can stop them from casting Tassiger. So stroke, and I guess that's it. Cut out one of the Atraxas. All right, run that. Man, new attracts are really is just the nuts. Yep, another design mistake card. See, everyone blames Modern Horizons 2 mostly for how bad these formats have become, but, you know, Pioneer has not been touched by the direct to modern sets, and it is really bad as well. It's not just Horizons. It's their entire design philosophy for cards these days. Some people dislike Pioneer even more than Modern. I don't agree with them, but I definitely understand. Basically, to put it this way... I'm enjoying this because I'm streaming this, but otherwise I would never touch Pioneer or Modern. All right, play Land Goat. Direct to Modern sets kind of just accelerated Modern to its inevitable endgame. See, I don't agree that that the state of the format is what it would inevitably have become anyway. I think it really is their designs. Is there even a design philosophy in general anymore? It just seems like they make whatever they want. Their design philosophy is... Uh, what is the maximum power level that we can push these cards to sell sets? So people will buy boosters and stores will buy boosters. And it's like, okay, you can print super pushed overpowered cards, but then you need to step in and errata or ban them when they become too powerful. But they're not willing to do that either. Marsh, Caryatid, go. And also sell EDH design stuff that sometimes breaks their formats. Yeah, that's another thing. They design made for EDH cards without any consideration for how those cards will affect uh, Legacy. Thoughtseize. We have two Ronas, so they can't take those. So their best bet is either to take Stroke so we can't stroke their Tassiger, or to take Karn or Tyvar to prevent us from comboing faster. Takes Tyvar. Thoughtseize again. So I imagine they take Karn. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess I just play Rona and pass. Doesn't help that the people who run EDH are awful at their job, but that's a whole other bag of worms. Yeah, the EDH ban list makes no sense. Founding the third path to cast Fatal Push for free to kill Rona. Mm-hmm. So the problem is if I run Rona out now, then I can't stroke Tassiger next turn when they mill over a bunch of stuff, but they're going to mill over and then eventually just cast Thoughtseize anyway. So let's see. Oath of Nyssa, I need to hit lands. So I think I need to go land, then hold stroke up for Tassiger, and then next turn play Rona, and then they just Thoughtseize the stroke and then Tassiger Neoform, so it doesn't matter. But at the very least, Hmm. If they Tassiger Neoform now on their turn, that at least means they're tapped out. So maybe I do just run Rona out. All right. There's a land. I think it has to be... I guess it doesn't have to be Mana Confluence because I have Sylvan Caryatid and Oath and play for Luka. So just grab Blooming Marsh, play Blooming Marsh, play Rona, and pass. So mills over a bunch of cards. I feel like what's going on... Eh, okay, Fatal Push. I feel like what's going on is... Either the designers of the game, they just are in their own bubble and they never go out and actually play real magic, like real paper magic in a store with prizes on the line, or, or like on Moto, or they just, Hasbro and Watsy just says, no, sell sets, sell sets. All right, it absolutely sucks that this is tapped and we can't Luka now. So I just play this and then pass with Stroke up and that doesn't even matter because Stroke doesn't hit Neoform. So then they get Neoform back with the Founding. Then Neoform the Tassiger, Thoughtseize, taking Luka. Oh, so they just have another Neoform or what? 
or they don't care. They're just going to win with the Tassiger on the board. Okay, go to 16. Okay, they just opted for Thoughtseize over Neoform, really. All right, well, I can't do Diddly here. I guess I can Retraction Oath back to my hand and play Oath again. That seems better than doing nothing. All right, Retraction Helix. Stubborn Denial, our Retraction Helix, sure. All right, pass back to them. I'm 100% convinced that it's Hasbro backseating them because MTG is the only property making them any money currently. The design team at WotC hasn't changed much since pre-Kaladesh, at least not publicly. Just because the design team hasn't changed doesn't necessarily mean that the philosophy of how they design cards hasn't changed. Although that doesn't, that's not ex mutually exclusive to Hasbro backseating them. But I think it's easy to just say, oh, it's Hasbro's fault, but I don't think we can really do that. So, okay, they're going to go directly to Chapter 3 and then just Neoform their Tassiger. Yep. Finds Salvage Thought Seize, another Atraxa, Land Land Tassiger, Consider Land Grizzly Salvage. Picks Consider Thought Seize. What'd they pick? Consider Thought Seize Tassiger Land. We drew an Atraxa that we can't play, so they're just going to Thought Seize us and take whatever, and then we lose. Yeah, all right, we're dead. On to round number four. Remember when people complained about Modern because they said, oh, it's just two ships passing in the night. It's just two combo or aggro decks or whatever that are just trying to race each other. That's exactly what all of these matches have felt like. Nick Thos, don't care what you're doing. I'm just going to Nick Thos off and win. Atarka Red, don't care what you're doing. I'm just going to jam a bunch of creatures into play as fast as possible, attack you, pump my team, kill you. Neoform Atraxa, don't care what you're doing. I'm just going to do my Neoform plan and then you lose. Or I'll just thought seize all your stuff away and then Traxa. It's probably very nuanced and multifaceted, but the fact of the matter is modern MTG card design philosophy sucks. It's very hard to figure out how we got here in quotes, but very easy to fix it. So Pioneer is in their two ships phase. Ah, uh, we've got two pieces of the combo and Oath, we're good. Again, it goes back to my uh, every ring is fine video. It's just the play patterns are terrible. I'm not concerned about is this, oh, is X card too good? Is X deck too good? You know, for a very long time, and maybe even still, uh, Delver was considered to be the best deck in Legacy, right? Like, it just, no no exception, Delver's the best deck, right? And, but did any people have, did anyone have a problem with that, though? Was anyone like, oh, Delver's too good, therefore Legacy sucks? It was more like, yeah, Delver's the best deck. I mean, you could quibble over whether that's actually the case or not, but you could say, well, Delver's the best deck. But is the format still fun? Do people still play other decks? So we're facing against aggro. Let's play Rona pass. So if I don't find my combo on next turn, then my game plan is just retraction helix and play Oath of Nyssa a bunch of times. Fire design started in War of the Spark, didn't it? Or was it Eldraine? It started in War of the Spark. Or at least if it didn't start with that set, that's the set that was the most prominent in. Fire officially started doing Core 19, but I believe it was tested since Kaladesh. Watsi has a history of testing something, then having gap years. All right, so what can I do? Oath cannot find Amber. What can I... So I can Amber here and find what? Just like a creature of some kind? I don't... See, the thing is I don't have to play Retraction Helix now, so... Oh yeah, let's loot first. Loot. Atraxa. I don't need a second Atraxa in my hand, so let's discard that. Then let's play Oath. Untapping Rona. Then resolve this Oath. Another Rona and Kinon. All right, so Kinon. Then let's loot again. I'm going to keep lands more than Llanowar Elves. So bin Llanowar Elves, play Plaza, and then let's play Kinon. And then it's correct to loot again in case I find Amber. All right, discard a land. Pass the turn. I used to stomp Delver back in the day playing Merfolk and stifling their fetch lands. Yeah, exactly. Like, so there was not universal agreement that Delver was the best deck, but if you asked anyone what is the best deck, it used to be Delver. Like, they would say Delver, but even then, Delver wasn't, like, so good that it was better than everything else. So even if Delver was technically the best deck in the format, the format still had plenty of diversity and other decks could win. So it's not a matter of win rates. It's not a matter of X card is too good. It's a matter of are the play patterns fun? When a card like Hogak comes around, the problem isn't, oh, Hogak is too good. The problem is the play patterns suck because it's so good that you can't answer it. And it just wins on, you know, turn two or three. That's why it's bad. So this is the Boros Pia deck, and they just had a kind of a slow start. So no blocks, obviously. Not that slow of a start, though. Ooh, I can kin on into Atraxa, or Luka into Atraxa. All right, so loot with Rona. Oh, wait, no, I'm I'm short. of. I don't have the mana for Luka. I'm one short. Huh. Well, so play a land. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a mana short of actually playing Luka. I can do it next turn. So maybe the move was to Retraction Helix the Rona and then bounce Oath of Nyssa and try to go that way. 
Oh, well, nothing to be done about it now. We'll just pass back to them. I don't disagree that Pioneer has bad play patterns, but do you think you could be having uninteractive games with this deck because your deck is uninteractive? No, it's not because of the deck I'm playing. It's the format. I've, I've felt the same way with every other deck. Like, regardless of what deck I'm playing, is Nykthos fun? No. Reckless Impulse, Trigger Trigger. Just yield to this. Let's just yield to all of these triggers until the end of turn. All right, what are they impulsing into? Chain to the Rocks? Uh, I guess we still get to play Luka next turn. I guess they'll what? They'll chain Rona, right? And then we can Retraction Helix it back. But I don't want to do that, because if I do that, then they get to chain Natraxa. So make a Thopter. I guess they can just chain Kinnon, right? And then they have 3, 6, 9, 10 damage, 11 damage. The only time I have legitimately enjoyed Pioneer outside of just feeling the feeling of winning is playing Is It Prowess. Love that deck. Can all save them with Plaza? Yeah, but I can't use Plaza because then I'm a mana short of Lukang next turn. Chain to the Rocks. Trigger, trigger. All right, what are they targeting? I can't even block with Luka anyway. So targeting Rona. So that's fine. So Rona goes under there. Am I supposed to Helix now? Three, six, nine, ten, eleven. We go to three. So I can bounce Steamkin back to their hand and we take less damage. I can also just besage you, but then I'm short on mana. Yeah, so if we go to three, then I get a track. I guess if they deal with a track that we lose anyway. So no, I'm not going to do it. All right, we're at four. Back to us. So play this. I guess I attack with Luka. Swing, then play Luka, and minus here. Traxa triggers. All right, so Tyvar for the walker, Rona for the creature, Retraction Helix for the instant, Mana Confluence for the land, and that's everything. So done. And then we pass back to them, and if they can answer Traxa, we lose. But they didn't have removal last turn for, for uh, Kinnon, which I imagine they would have just used immediately if they did. White, colorless, red. So showdown? Yep. So if showdown hits a chain, we lose the game. All right. What do you hit? Not a chain. But they hit play with fire. So now they can just attack with everything. And then, although they can't play with fire, certain creatures of theirs. So yeah, make a Thopter. They have two mana. They can Steamkin. They can make red with Steamkin, play Monastery Swift Spear, play Pia, get five Thopter tokens attack and whichever one i block they play with fire that one yep and they appear they appear to have seen the line mm -hmm. wait they're play with firing us are we still just dead to the board even if we do this we block i guess swift spear is the highest power probably and then we take still lethal yeah i guess so it doesn't matter all right they attack with everything it doesn't even matter if we block they made six thopters all right is kalidus even good in this matchup okay massacre girl is definitely good is Kalidus even good? I don't think it is. Yeah, so let's just bring in Massacre Girl and cut a Luka. I guess Spell Pierce is okay. All right, another Luka. And run that. All right, on the play. Uh, this hand doesn't do anything, so we have to mold this. Even though it has, like, all the combo pieces except Rona, it's just not doing anything. All right, mold. This is much better. I So I don't think I actually been a Traxa here. I can actually ramp pretty fast. So maybe I just get rid of Helix. All right, so land, go. Because my next turn is Sylvan Karyatid, and then it's Kinnon, and I have five mana. Vantage, back to us. We drew Massacre Girl, which is not going to be good with the creature board that we have, but whatever. Karyatid, go. Second land, play Steamkin. So back to us, so Kinnon. And then we have no follow-up to that, so pass. I'm one short of playing Atraxa next turn. Third land. Rending Volley on Kinnon, unfortunate. Plays Pia and then gets Steamkin to a power that I can't block anymore. All right, play a tap land and go. I'm probably going to be forced to Massacre Girl before I want to because this is going to get out of hand. Reckless Impulse. Steamkin goes to three counters. Chain to the Rocks and Showdown. They can actually play Showdown. So presumably they'll attack first given the amount of mana they have. I don't know, maybe they have another land though. Yeah, so another land, then reduce this. Reduce this white here, showdown. They get one mana. Steamkin goes to two counters. They make a Thopter, and then showdown gets to put a bunch of stuff into play. Swift Spear. Why wouldn't they? I guess they're just going to go in for combat. Yeah, all right. So block here, and then they'll showdown post-combat. Yep, showdown. Make a Thopter token. Ren's Resolve and a bunch of lands. No, I shouldn't have played that land, because I'm going to play Oath first. Doesn't matter. I think I probably just have to Massacre Girl here. I don't think I can wait for Atraxa. So, Oath of Nyssa, trigger. There's Tyvar and Karn. Tyvar is probably the better of the two. So if I go Massacre Girl, kill this, kill this. kill It kills their whole board. 
and then they get to untap impulse draw and then chain the massacre girl all right it has to be done i can't wait another turn for attracts it again online so this deck has a number of problems in terms of the play patterns against it the first is that it's an aggro deck that actually gets better as the game goes on because between Pr prowess steamkin and pia solve the problem of these impulse cards being tempo negative because now they're not tempo negative then later in the game when you have more mana you just keep playing them and never run out of spells to cast and they also have the problem of your opponent just always has extra cards in exile that they're going to play next turn so traditionally one of the issues an aggro deck would have would be if you cast a sweeper it just kills their whole board but they've always got just extra nonsense either all currently in exile or about to be played from exile anyway meaning you can never actually keep them off the board. So you're going to see, like, I just swept their board with Massacre Girl. It's not even going to matter. They're going to play Ren's Resolve, get more cards, chain to the rocks, Massacre Girl, and have more things to do next turn. And also, previous impulse draw effects always had the downside of you had to play the spell right now, which meant that you had to have a bunch of mana because you had to spend two mana at least on your impulse draw card anyway. Now, these persist until your next turn, meaning you don't have to have the mana immediately which means that they've effectively become two mana draw twos. Oh, they're just not going to bother casting Ren's Resolve, really? Oh, so Pia puts counters here with the showdown. Do they have another red spell to play then? Because otherwise they needed to play this mountain first so they could cast Chained. I think they mistapped. Yeah, mountain, trigger, make a Thopter. They needed to play this mountain earlier so that they could go chain to the rocks, put three counters here. Oh no, they still have something to do. Fiery Impulse on Massacre Girl. Okay. Then Steamkin gets three counters, and they reduce the counters. Ren's Resolve, they put more counters on this stuff. Effectively gave Boros Aggro their own version of Curious Obsession in terms of what it does. Yeah, essentially. It's like you can never keep them off of having more cards. So they lose the Chain to the Rocks and these two lands, but they get to Ren's Resolve, put counters on stuff. I'm surprised they wouldn't just Chained instead of playing Pia, but I don't know. See, it's... All right, double Chained, three Vantages. So at the very least, they get to Chain to the Rocks next turn. See, I would have 100% just chained this instead of PAing it up. But as you can see, like, I just board wiped them, and they already have four power, two power, two one ones with flying. All right, Plaza. I'm still one mana away from casting Atraxa. So if I Tyvar minus, I don't get to keep Tyvar alive because the Thopters can kill him, but I'm not doing anything else. So let's go Tyvar. And then minus and get back Karyatid to guarantee that I have mana for Atraxa next turn. Mill. All right, get back Karyatid. And then I guess I just pass. So they can chain to the rocks Massacre Girl, which I'm not going to counter so that I have the mana for Atraxa. And then they will kill Tyvar and then attack for a whole bunch. So land, make another Thopter. Chain to the rocks, make another Thopter. Eat Massacre Girl. Actually, let me think about this. Do I have to save this? Because otherwise then I have to block with Karyatid, right? Because this is seven, this is lethal. So I do actually have to save my Massacre Girl, amazingly. All right, target this. Because otherwise I'd be forced to just chump block Pia or Steamkin. Got a two CMC Monorock in Standard again today. That's neat. Have we, are there new previews that we didn't see earlier? We'll take a look at that between leagues. So all the Thopters. So Thopter kills Tyvar, other Thopters attacking us and they're not going to trade off with their massacre girl with massacre girl yeah so well actually it doesn't even trade off because it's indestructible so it just blocks these things so giganta in hand but they don't quite have the mana to play it immediately besage you all right so it's a land i can play atraxa three six yeah all right play atraxa trigger all right what do i want for the creature definitely rona land plaza of heroes planeswalker luca enchantment oath of nissa that's everything all right pass back and they have all of these. If they have removal for a tracks that we lose. So their hand is Gigantha and two unknown cards. Looks like a chain to the rocks. Yep, they just had the removal. There goes a Traxa, And now the only thing we can do is block here. And then we still take lethal. All right, then. Well, there's no reason to play the fifth round, but whatever. Let's just do it to see how the deck performs. All right. Well, we're just going to run this to see what we do. Marsh, Elvish Mystic, go. Island. I can play Rona plus Oath of Nyssa, or I can play Kinnon and then double Oath. Rona being untapped, Matt. Rona having the ability to tap matters, though. So Plaza, Blue, tap for this, play Rona, play Oath of Nyssa, Stubborn Denial. All right. Apparently, I should have played that first. So Blue, Stubborn Denial, huh, Steam Man. I was going to say Neoform Atraxa, but I guess not. Karn. Karn can go fetch Amber. So 
Loot. All right, discard the second Rona. Shock this in. Play Karn. Trigger to untap. So what is this, like blue-red control? But they're playing Stubborn, so they have to have creatures. So Lumgar's Scorn. So blue-red dragons. All right, loot. All right, Tyvar is here. So let's discard Kinnon and then pass. Deserted Beach. So Jeskai dragons. All right, loot. And they just don't have removal for Rona. Get rid of Karyatid. Play Kinnon. Untap Rona. Resolve Kinnon, presumably. All right, loot. There's Retraction Helix. So let's get rid of Oath. Then green, black, cast Tyvar. Triggers Rona. All right, they've just conceded to this, I guess. Sideboarding, I guess there are control decks. Let's play Thought Distortion and Dragon Lord Dramoka and Spell Pierce and cut what exactly? They had no removal that game, but I assume they usually have removal. So two of the Kinons can go and then I just want like the maximum grindy stuff, I suppose. Get rid of one Atraxa. Or maybe that's wrong. I don't know. One track, someone Luca, something like that. Submit. Double Mana Confluence hurts, but it is a good hand. Hallowed Fountain tapped. All right. Mana Confluence, make green, play Elvish Mystic. Spire Bluff. Invasion of Tark here. Enters the battlefield, reveal any number of dragons. When you do, it deals X plus two damage to any other target. So kill Elf. So this is just Sky Dragons. Yep. All right. Well. Confluence, play Karyatid, and we're taking a whole bunch of damage. Deserted Beach, Invasion of Gobacon. Not sure what they'll choose here. All right, Luka, sure, it makes sense. All right, I need to find lands that are not Mana Confluence. Oath, Trigger, all right, get Karn. Sending Amber and Retraction Helix to the graveyard. Um, all right, another Oath, I just need to hit lands. All right, Botanical, play Botanical, and then play another Karyatid. Go. So one, two, three, four, five. Seven to cast Luca. Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Opponent plays Rip. Sure. I don't need my graveyard to combo. Another carry it did. Two mana open. If I were to grab something with Karn, I would grab what? Haywire might to eat this. Or do I just keep playing out mana? Probably just keep playing out mana, right? So Rona, carry it did. Red and white. Draconic Roar on Rona. Sure. And then play Elf. Go. So I can play Luka next turn and then just eat a Karyatid so it's removal proof. White, two, or yeah, two white and colorless, cycle triome. All right, so they understand what we're doing and have conceded. All right, so uh, the deck obviously had a very poor showing, but I don't think the deck is as bad as what it turned out to be. I think this is actually a good deck and we just, I don't know. We didn't get variant out in terms of like getting mana screwed for the most part. It felt like just our opponent, it felt like a league full of everything our opponents did just lined up perfectly against whatever we did. So, for example, against the Boros Pia deck, we resolve a Traxa. Oh, they have a Chain to the Rocks for it. We we did brick on lands at least one of the games. We just had a lot of circumstances where our opponent just had whatever they needed to exactly line up with what we had. But I think the deck is, again, results aside, actually good. I don't know if the exact configuration is correct. It's possible that like Kinnon is maybe overrated. I would like a way for Kinnon to win the game when you have infinite mana, which it currently doesn't have. It just has, you Kinnon into a Traxa and then a Traxa will probably find you the win. I guess that's good enough. And the sideboard, obviously I would like it to have more picks for Karn, mostly Damping Sphere and Stonebrain to handle combo decks and something else that's like a big bomb which it currently doesn't have. But anyway, that takes us to the end of the Rona Combo League.